Wonder Hussy here with a breaking news report coming to you live from the side of US 95, about two and a half hours north of Las Vegas, at the site of the former Cottontail Ranch brothel, which has now burned down. That's right. Uh, I've been off the grid the past few weeks, but I had several people email me news stories about this tragedy. Okay, some of you might not think it's a tragedy that an old abandoned brothel burned down, but I think it's a tragedy because this wasn't just any abandoned brothel. This was a very historic abandoned brothel. And it's a good thing I went and shot videos here while I could because I had a feeling it wouldn't be here forever. Okay, if you've been watching my channel for a while, uh, well, gosh, I think I made two or three videos here. I mean, I made one just touring around an old abandoned brothel, and it was a really cool abandoned brothel. It had really neat old wallpaper, and, well, it had two long trailers with bedrooms lining each side where the women did their business and had this really cool kind of parlor bar area in the front where the guys would sit and have a drink while they were choosing which lady they wanted to uh, party with. And then there was this really cool kind of vestibule doorway, like a double doorway where you had to knock and be led into this little front room. And then the madam would peek out this window before she you know, really let you in. It was just a fascinating place, but it's no more. I don't know if this was arson or it was just some kind of crazy accident, but this place is toast. I gotta be real careful walking around this rubble because, well, I'm on my way back from Burning Man, sort of. I mean, I went to a hot spring after Burning Man. and Well, long story short, I don't have any appropriate footwear with me, so I'm wearing flip-flops. Basically, uh, well, you can see all that's left here are the, look, that's the hitch of the old trailer of one side of the brothel that went down there. And then here's a hitch for the other side. Let's see, oh God. It's easy to forget that uh, almost all, if not all brothels in the state of Nevada, which is the only state in the United States that has legal prostitution, well, almost, if not all the brothels here are just trailers. You know, they're <laughs> designed to be moved if needed. And this brothel here actually was moved. Like I said, this is, wasn't just any brothel. This was a very historical brothel, uh, or a very historic brothel. There was a really interesting woman named Beverly Harrell, who was the madam here, a fiery redhead from New York City who moved out west to, well, to become a famous movie star. And well, she ended up falling into prostitution instead. And then from there, she went into madaming. And well, from there, she decided, well, she got run out of Hollywood and ended up out here in the Nevada desert. Well, actually not here. She ended up somewhere in this area, uh, my understanding is she was leasing land from the federal government. It was uh, public land, BLM land, that I think she was leasing space from to run this brothel. But then when they found out she was running a brothel, they kicked her off. And so she had to jack the brothel up, <laughs> tow it to its new location right here at the side of US 95, which is one of two highways that runs north, south in Nevada. So it's one of the major thoroughfares, but it's at the junction with the uh, Oh gosh, I don't even know the number of this road. It's the road that goes to Lida, Ghost Town, and then from there you can go on into Death Valley. So believe it or not, this lonely junction is what passes for a major intersection out in these parts, which I don't even need to tell you are very, very desolate parts. But apparently uh, Madam Harrell, <laughs> Beverly Harrell, did pretty good business out here because the brothel was open for a long time. Gosh, I think she opened it sometime in the late 60s, mid 60s, and it only closed down in like, I wanna say like 2005-ish. I don't have the information with me because I'm coming off, gosh, I'm coming off three weeks off grid, out of cell signal, so I didn't have time to do any research into this, but you can go back and watch my other videos that I made about this. I mean, not only did I do a video just kind of touring the abandoned brothel, but then I did another video really talking about the history of this brothel and how it related to Howard Hughes. Okay, so that was one wing of the brothel. You can see here on the other side. Golly, this one is one, two, three, four single wides just stacked up next to each other. I never realized that it was just a bunch. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six single wides. And then I can't remember if there was like a courtyard in here or if that was, 
I feel like this was the front door. Gosh, it's hard to remember. I've been here so many times over the years. I think the first time I came here was uh, when I was working as a model. I worked as a nude model, and I did some nudie photo shoots up here probably around 2015-ish, I would guess, 2014. Uh, so that's probably about the first time I came up here. And Gosh, I thought I remembered the front door being like right here, but it seems like you'd be able to see something left of the front doorstep, but I'm totally confused. I guess maybe the front door was here and it just all burned down. I mean, maybe there were wooden, there must've been wooden stairs. And then that means the parlor would have been back there. I guess these were just bedrooms. Look at that, just set up on cinder block. Oh my gosh. Part of me wants to take a cinder block, an historic cinder block from the infamous Cottontail Ranch brothel where Miss Beverly Harrell not only ran a successful business, she also ran the state assembly. She was so mad at the BLM for forcing her to move that, well, it's a long and complicated story and I go into it in more detail in my other video, but she ended up running for state assembly and some say she actually won, but the good old boys up here in this county really didn't want some redheaded Jewish New York woman who ran a brothel uh, sitting on the state assembly so they they rigged the election and she never did get in gosh there is absolutely nothing left here i was hoping i might be able to find some kind of cool little souvenir but <laughs> not likely okay anyway like i was saying uh also this brothel has ties to howard hughes that's right howard hughes the famous eccentric billionaire who famously lived on the top floor of the desert inn hotel in vegas for years without leaving the room ever and then uh, that, when he died, that <sighs> will turned up, this mysterious Howard Hughes will turned up where he left like a significant chunk of his fortune to some cr random Mormon guy that nobody knew. Who the heck is this Mormon guy? And Howard Hughes, how, how would Howard Hughes have known him? And why would he leave his money to him? Oh, look at this. Bathtubs. <laughs> This must have been the bathtub where Miss Beverly Harrell shaved her legs. Or maybe where the working gals from the brothel shaved their legs. Or uh, actually, probably where the working gals would take a bath with customers. You know, some, some customers want to take a bath with the working girl. I guess it's kind of an erotic thing to take a bath with somebody. Oh, there's nothing erotic about it anymore. Gosh, look over here. You can see the wheels under the old trailer, the old axle. Oh my God, look at that. Wow the stories these axles could tell. Anyway, yeah, like I said, uh, Howard Hughes uh, supposedly never left the hotel. Well, that's not true. He actually did leave the desert inn on several occasions because he liked to come up here to this brothel. And I know you go, oh, Howard Hughes, he was the richest man in the world at that time. What did he need to go pay for sex? Well, he was eccentric and he had this one sex worker up here that he really liked named Sunny, this beautiful blonde with a diamond in her tooth. I go into great detail uh, in my video. If you're interested, you can watch that. But he used to come up here and visit Sunny. And well, like I said, we're two and a half hours north of Vegas. He was just sneaking out of his room. He had all these handlers around him at that time because he was in poor health. And well, he had this like, they called it the Mormon mafia around him that like took care of him, but was also kind of like bleeding him dry. like. I think literally and figuratively. They were just waiting for him to die so they could get his money. Uh, they couldn't know that he was leaving the room, so he couldn't be gone for two and a half hours there, two and a half hours back, and, well, at least an hour here. That's like, what, six hours? No. He had a pilot. He had this pilot that he would have secretly fly him from Vegas up here. There's actually an airstrip right here behind me. On the other side of that fence, you can see there's an airstrip. I mean, a very rough desert airstrip lined by old tires on either side. Well, that's where Howard Hughes would have his pilot uh, take him, land the plane. Howard Hughes would come up here to do his business. The pilot would hang out in the bar waiting, and then he would fly him back to Vegas. Well, one night, I guess, it's a long story, but the pilot fell asleep. And when he woke up, it was morning, and the brothel was closing down, and Howard Hughes was nowhere to be found. And so, of course, he was panicked. Like, what happened to my boss? Oh, he left hours ago left hours ago like how did he get back to vegas we're out in a very desolate part of nevada and it was probably even more so back in those days well some think and i am one of them think that howard hughes left the brothel he was either lured out by some guys who said they would give him a ride back and then ended up robbing him because you know he always carried this big weird doctor's bag with him when he came up here that probably had some kind of sexual implements in it but probably had money too 
Anyway, uh, probably got robbed and then dumped at the side of the road, and that's where this Mormon guy picked him up. I mean, the Mormon guy's story never changed over the years. He said, oh yeah, I gave a guy a ride once. I was driving down 95 in the middle of the night, just past the brothel, pulled over to take a whiz, and there was a man passed out in a ditch. And he didn't know it was Howard Hughes. I mean, in, in those days, Howard Hughes had, like, he didn't, famously, he didn't trim his toenails or his fingernails, and his beard was really long and greasy, and he didn't look anything like what most people thought Howard Hughes looked like, because in those days, we didn't have invasive paparazzi that showed you exactly what people looked like, even in their hours of despair. No, you only had, like, their publicity shots to go by, so everybody thought Howard Hughes still looked like Howard Hughes in the aviator days, you know, like nice slicked back hair, a little mustache, dapper suit. <laughs> so when this guy picked up some bum with a long greasy beard passed out in a ditch, there's no way he would have ever guessed that was Howard Hughes. So sadly, that uh, innocent Mormon dude never did get any of Howard Hughes' will, and I go into all that in my uh, other video, so check that out if you're interested. But this was the brothel where it all happened or where it all started. I told you it was historical or maybe just hysterical I don't know interestingly I remember coming in this side uh, there was a really big jacuzzi bathtub like one of those really big jacuzzi tubs you could really party in but it seems to me you would see the remnants of a big fiberglass tub but it looks like maybe they already came in and cleaned some stuff up here like all the rubble seems like it's sort of been raked into place I mean I am uh, a couple weeks late to this story like I said I've been out of cell signal off grid for a few weeks so i think i missed my scoop but doesn't this look like fiberglass i mean that looks like fiberglass to me so this might be part of that old bathtub and that makes sense because i remember this was the door that went into the room that had the big bathtub gosh what a tragedy i wish nevada would just embrace its weird history instead of like covering all this stuff up like this brothel should have been a museum it could have been a museum to to brothels and sex work you know instead of trying to pretend like it doesn't happen here like let's just accept the fact that yes it does happen and you know there's some pretty interesting history associated with it and gosh i don't know i mean there's not much going on up here in esmeralda county it could have been a little tourist attraction for people driving up and down 95 from vegas to reno but like all history in nevada they just leave it here to rot and eventually get burned down so unfortunately there never will be any kind of brothel museum here and there probably will never be any kind of brothel museum anywhere in nevada because uh, nevada likes to be all coy about its past and uh, they like to call gambling gaming and well you know how they are anyway even though the old cottontail ranch brothel is no more you can still buy well, I'm not sure if that brothel was part of this or not, but this parcel of land has been for sale for a long, long time. Uh, the sign says it's the historic Lida Ranch, and I don't know where it is. It's back up the road towards Lida somewhere, but apparently it's 2,200 acres with water rights, grazing rights, mining claims. Uh, apparently it's good for cannabis production. And it's got a 5,100 square foot ranch house. I mean, Keller Williams, really, you can't proofread this ginormous banner. You're, you're trying to sell this million dollar property and you can't even spell house, right? Guys, really. See what I mean? It says ranch house. I mean, I don't know much, but at least I know how to spell the word house. <laughs> anyway, uh, this has been for sale for a long time. I don't know exactly how much they're asking. Let me see if it says anything on the other side. Nope, same thing. Although you can see on this side, Keller Williams, I don't think are the first realtor to represent this property because there's another sign underneath it that I liked better uh, because it mentioned the fact that brothels were permitted. But apparently that real estate agency got tired of representing the property because no one ever bought it. And so they passed it on to Keller Williams and golly, now this old eyesore of a brothel has burned down. Well, maybe that'll generate some fresh interest in the historic Lida Ranch and well, somebody will move into that 5,100 square foot ranch house and throw some kind of epic parties because I know that's what I would do. Anyway, that's pretty much all there is to report here at the former site of the Cottontail Ranch brothel right at the intersection of US 95 and the highway to Lida. I think it's Nevada 266. Unfortunately, there's nothing left to enjoy anymore other than some very... Well, some very fragrant ashes and some very poignant memories. 
But next time you're driving up this way, hey, at least look over to the left as you're headed north or uh, look over to the right as you're headed south. And well, give a little thought to Miss Beverly Harrell, Howard Hughes, Sonny the prostitute, Melvin Dumar, the poor hapless Mormon who picked up Howard Hughes, and all the other people who came to this establishment when it was still operating. Because whatever you want to say about it, it was a part of Nevada history. And if I might say so, I think it was one of the most interesting parts of Nevada history.